All right, let's review vapor pressure. What is vapor pressure? Well, vapor pressure is the pressure a liquid kind of feels of pushing it to evaporate, so to turn into a gas. So it's that pressure within a liquid, like, ah, let me out, let me turn into a gas. Okay, but we also have atmospheric pressure pushing down, okay? So if we have a low vapor pressure, it's most likely due to strong intermolecular forces. So those strong intermolecular forces are holding those particles closer together. So there's less pressure to form a gas. When there's weak intermolecular forces, there's a higher vapor pressure and there's a higher tendency to turn into a gas or evaporate. So there's isopropyl alcohol versus water. Which one has a higher vapor pressure? So we're gonna test this. Well, we'll do it in class. So it's a little hard to do here. So we'll take a drop of water, put it on our desk, a drop of, of isopropyl alcohol, put it on our desk, and see which one evaporates first. The one that evaporates first has lower intermolecular forces. If it has stronger intermolecular forces, it's going to take longer for it to evaporate. So at home, you could test this on your own. Drop of isopropyl alcohol, drop of water at the same time, wait and see which one evaporates first. Okay, what is evaporation versus boiling? Like if you leave a glass of water out, it's going to evaporate, it's not going to boil. Why? Well, in order for it to boil, the vapor pressure has to equal the atmospheric pressure. That allows bubbles to form and rise and boil. So although evaporation can happen, not boiling unless the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure. In order to do that, it can either lower the pressure of the, the atmospheric pressure, or what I can do is increase the vapor pressure in the liquid so I can provide heat. So boiling point, again, means the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure. In order to do that, I have to increase the temperature, which remember, increases the kinetic energy. That causes the intermolecular forces to decrease because those particles are moving faster and not held together as tightly. And as those intermolecular forces drop, the vapor pressure goes up. And then eventually, the vapor pressure will equal the atmospheric pressure and it will boil. All right, let's look at a dynamic equilibrium. So you can see we have two phases. We have gas and we have liquid. And initially there is um, more movement from the liquid to the gas phase. And just one particle here going from the gas to the liquid. At an equilibrium, it's going to be in balance. So you see we have an equal number of particles leaving the liquid state going to the gas and then an equal number of particles going from the gas to the liquid. That is what is equilibrium. Okay, here again, we can see an equilibrium being reached. So um, molecules escaping from the surface, forming a vapor, remember as a result of vapor pressure. So we have particles escaping, going from uh, liquid to gas, um, eventually, we reach an equilibrium and we can measure the vapor pressure. So we have to close the container in order to measure it. What is the effect of temperature on vapor pressure? Well, if we increase the temperature, we increase the kinetic energy of the particles. The number of particles changing to a vapor increases. So the vapor pressure increases. So this would be low temperature, high temperature. You can see it on a graph of vapor pressure. As we increase temperature, vapor pressure increases. So vapor pressure increases as temperature increases. You should know how to use table H. So that was a little different than the graph that I just showed, but it still has four um, substances, vapor pressure and temperature. So you can see on this graph on table H how vapor pressure increases with temperature. As you increase temperature, no matter which of these four substances you look at, the vapor pressure increases. 
there is a normal boiling point line. So you just see this right here, that's a standard pressure, 101.3 kPa. This right here is the normal boiling point line. So if I wanted to find the normal boiling point of propanone, I go where this dotted line crosses propanone and I go down and I can read the temperature. That will give me the normal boiling point. Okay, so what is the normal boiling point of ethanol? Well, in order to do that, I find the normal boiling point line and I go across until I hit the graph for ethanol. Then I go down and I read the temperature. So about 73 degrees Celsius. I mean, about 78 degrees Celsius. So 75 right here, it's not quite at 80. So about 78 degrees Celsius. What liquid has the lowest vapor pressure at 50 degrees Celsius? So I find 50 degrees Celsius and I go up. The first line I hit would have the lowest vapor pressure. Which substance has the highest boiling point? Okay, so I go across on my normal boiling point line and the first substance, if I look at uh, propanone, it's about say 57, okay, as the normal boiling point. Ethanol, we said was about 78. Water is 100. So ethanoic acid, 105, 110, 115, so about 117 or 118. So which substance has the highest boiling point? That would be ethanoic acid, which means it has the highest intermolecular forces. Which substance has the strongest intermolecular forces? Well, I kind of just said that, right? Highest boiling point means strongest intermolecular forces. Ethanoic acid. That's it. That is a review of paper pressure. I hope you learned something new today.